thing in your nightmare, that thing that's holding you back, that thing that's dragging you down, that thing is you. You will not outwork me. And the whole gig is just a giant hustle. That's all it is. Life is just a hustle. That's all life is. One giant hustle. I'm going to try to tonight, maybe, uh, work on this plug. So this plug is out of a coyote harness. This is the one that we are after. So here's the harness. This is out of a coyote. Our car, of course, has a coyote. Now, where does this plug go? This plug goes into the alternator. This is the three-prong plug that goes right here. Currently, all we have is the single uh, charging wire, the big fat wire. That wire, of course, goes back to the back, just like it's supposed to be wired, and everything works fine, and it does charge. But this alternator, OEM, stock alternator, flip, reverse. We went over how to make this thing charge in reverse. It has some pulley change. You need to go back on my channel and look if you're interested. Uh, it's charging, but it only spits out like 13s. Uh, it should be spitting out low 14s is what I recently learned. Now, I would like to put my excess battery back in here. Uh, this is a S925. This is a 12-volt battery, but I paid good money for this. This battery is brand spanking new. This is what the car was wired on, uh, but I took it out whenever we were stressing this thing out extremely fast um, the first time we blew it up because we didn't have alternator charging. Since then, I did not want to put wear and tear on this battery, and I have not had it in the car. Car runs fine now, it cranks every single time, and there's no issues. The only issues that was brought to my attention by actually one of y'all on my channel, uh, somebody pointed it out, I think, and then I jumped into the uh, Ford Coyote groups on Facebook, and somebody else confirmed that this alternator is gonna eventually destroy this battery, the part store battery is back there, so we definitely don't want this guy in there right now uh, because it's not charging at 100% where it's supposed to be at. So we kind of want to fix that. So all we're trying to do right now to get this video started is we're trying to pull this plug out of this harness, this factory harness, plug it in the car, route the wires, get it in there on the input, and then we will look at our papers and figure out, or get it in there at the inputs, we'll figure out what input it should go on, and then we will try to figure it out in the holly. I'm not that great, but we'll try to figure it out in the holly on how to actually wire this thing so that this PWM, um, whatever that is, I know something pulsing, uh, something, but uh, so that that works um, with the car so that this alternator charges correctly. Um, the reason why we're using this factory harness is as I just said, we are not trying to accumulate more debt. You can go to your local parts store and you can type in the alternator plug uh, for a coyote or whatever like that, and you can get that plug for about 50 bucks local that pigtail. eBay, you can get it anywhere from 20 to all the way up to whatever you can imagine. Um, but I figured being we have a factory harness here, I mean, we don't want to spend money and um, why not? Why not cut this one up, right? So all we're going to try to do is I, I a lot of y'all are going to probably say just depin this and repin it. Um, the issue is, is that I really don't like that. I'm not the most uh, best electrician in the world. So what I want to attempt to do is see how far this wire goes or where it goes, how much wiring I can get. Um, kind of wondering if it goes up here and, um, that will eliminate how much cutting I have. We are going to take it and I'm going to figure out which one it is. If I can pull on it, see it here. And then we're going to step in off this real fast. And then we will take us some paint thinner. My hands were completely black from my wrapping all that nasty electrical tape clean them up paint thinner rag it wipes right off uh, so we'll snip our wires and then we will put paint thinner in the rag again and we're, we will run our wires through here and get them in the vehicle all right so we got it separated and we got our little pigtail made uh, so we've put some nice wire loom on it and we have a glue uh, marine grade heat is shrink uh, shrunk down on there and so we're gonna go we have the little stubs on this end and we uh, are ready to get this thing in the car but before i do that i got to thinking instead of making a connection on this and making this harness go all the way to the holly we'll just go ahead and put a deutsch connector right here on the end of that a deutsch connector is going to be good to go to make our connection to run it the rest of the way better than i'm, I'm guessing soldering it together and stuff like that 
I have all the proper tools to do a Deutsch connector the proper way. So why not do that? And then that way, if we ever, Lord knows, we wreck the front end or if the wiring gets chewed up or damaged or if we have to take the motor out of the car, you know, we can just, that's one more wiring harness that we can simply unplug and just take right out of the car. All right, so here's the kit I use. This thing's amazing. Uh, if you're interested in this kit, type in Deutsch connectors um, on my channel. So if you need to, you can literally just search YouTube for paint and paper hustle Deutsch connectors. Um, and I did a video on the part numbers, this whole kit, the price, everything. This kit's amazing. I promise you, DIY guys, budget guys, I promise you, you're missing out if you don't have this kit. Um, so we have put an end on it now. So this is how nice it looks. We have the factory end, factory wires to our new, Deu our new Deutsch connector, okay? Um, it, man, this is just a game changer. I mean, Chris Moore wired these for me. And you can see he uses the Deutsch connectors, labels them and all that. And that's what I would do is if I have my label maker here is I would have went ahead and labeled these. But I don't have it here, so um, we're just going to rock and roll with it. It's getting a little late already, but uh, I'm at least going to try to get this in the car. All right, so this video actually, the first part of this video was actually filmed probably two months ago. Uh, and then we had a bunch of racing happen. I kept my mouth shut. Y'all didn't even know that I had added this to the car. So now we're catching back up. So we have our harness ran from our alternator to the inside of the car. Now all we have to do is get the harness from our plug where we build our plug at through the firewall to the actual setup inside there. So you're going to have three wires on your alternator plug. Now you're only using two of them. I was originally told that you only need the uh, to use one wire the, which for the PWM and that's going to be a negative PWM um, but uh, the gentleman that had done his like that it worked for him it did not work for me it did not work for another gentleman I jumped in a Facebook group and got some help and I got mine to work I can especially say mine works um, so you're going to need two wires basically to sum it up your three wires on your alternator plug for the factory coyote alternator this is a gen one but the alternator should be the same across the board just about um i think this is going to be a fifth generation alternator style for ford i believe that's what it was um but this is a gen one coyote um gen one alternator so three wires one goes to your gauge that's going to tell the car that your alternator's not working you don't need that that that's trash you don't need that for this app this kind of application your other one is going to be the PWM negative setup in your Holly. And your third one is going to be a ignition on 12 volt. So the PWM, when you're looking at the, uh, the plug, is going to be, okay, there's my plug right there. Let's see if we can get down there to focus on it. There we go. It's going to be that center wire, that bluish wire, okay? Uh, that is going to be the wire that's going to get the PWM. Uh, the other wire is going to be this one over here to the left. That is going to be pin three. So it's going to be right here. This one right here is going to be pin three. This purplish one over here, we're not using because that was the factory um, uh, warning light. So we're using this one and the center one. Then we're the wires that we're using, and that is looking at the alternator like this, okay? That is in relatively of plugging the alternator in. It's going to be pins three, two, one. Um, that's going to be the thing. And the push pin, the clip is on the top. I'll put a diagram up on the screen right now. Of that pin out so that you can... Uh, See it for yourself and you can screenshot it and uh, reference it. So when you build your harness your, or whatever you do, remember I used the factory wiring as far as it would go. We stripped it out. Uh, it stopped and then the high had to build a three plug. So this is where the information is going to get universal. Um, but I gave you the colors of the wires right there. So from there, you just have to connect them to yours. And you might have enough wire off of just the harness or maybe you extended it, whatever. Uh, that you're going to have to make your uh, your own connections. But for me, I have this three. I brought all three wires up here inside the car, all three of the wires. That way they're there if I needed them. Thank God I did. Um, 
So this is my setup right here. This is how mine's wired. This is my PWM on the bottom. And this is my 12 volt um, exciter wire on the side. Again, every application is gonna be different. Uh, you know, you trace your wires for your applications. So I've already hooked all of this up and confirmed that it worked before I move forward with filming and then find out it don't work and then have to delete all this film. Um, but we pulled it out. We went and uh, pulled the transmission out of the car and did all that. And now I'm trying to get it back in today in preparation. Uh, to make a couple other changes to the charging system and get it ready to go to Darlington this weekend. Um, so I'm going to get this bundled all up and get this ran into the actual car and then show you how that's all hooked up. All right, so my car, again, it's kind of pointless to show you all this but because uh, every car is going to be different. But basically, I brought my wires in, put them underneath my console. So the first stop that my blue wire makes right here, this is going to be our PWM wire. Is this going to go in my output feed? Now everything is different. This is going to be an output inside Holly, uh, so that's what this is. All of this stuff inside my center console. This is all Holly. Every bit of this stuff. All of this right here on this carbon panel. This is like your BCM in a vehicle. So this is all body control. Basically, this is all switches, headlights, uh, relays. This is all all stuff for the car. So we hit right here our Holly output. And then we dip off right here with our brown wire. We come down and we hit a 12 volt, a trigger 12 volt right here. Now this is my main uh, ignition wire right here, this block. So this whole block right here, straight across, this is my main ignition. So this kicks on the ECM, this kicks on the fuel pumps, like this is triggered. So I called my wiring guy who uh, assisted in wiring. He wired most of the car. Uh, I did basically all this. He did all the Holly stuff um, and t spoke with him. And I said, I really don't have anything triggered 12 volt in this car. It's a race car. Uh, kind of everything you can just turn on up here on my switch panel at all times. Everything kind of can be hot when you have the actual power switch on. Um, but of course, your ignition is switched with your fuel, fuel pumps and all that. My secondary fuel pump can be cut on anytime. So this car has dual fuel pumps, dual 750s. Um, but there's only really one switch right now so i just i asked him i said is it cool to overlay it over top of that and um you know the main ignition and he was like yeah he's like because you're not really drawing any voltage uh this wire right here is an basically an exciter wire so it's kind of like a switched wire uh, it just tells the alternator hey come on and do your thing um the holly output wire is what actually controls you're going to build this in the holly system and then i'll show you that here in a minute that's what's going to actually control what and when the alternator works but without this 12 volt switched the alternator is not going to charge or not going to do anything at all so it's like it's got to hit 12 volt first to turn the alternator on and then it's got to follow the feedback of the pwm negative switched um control so that's how i have mine set up um again it don't really draw voltage so i don't think i don't even know where that come from uh i don't it we both don't think that that's gonna be an issue at all but that's the basics is you gotta have a holly output and you gotta have a switch 12 volt now i did ask another buddy of mine i said what do you think about just right there on the alternator jumping that little 12 volt over to the stud uh, that's hot and then basically you ain't got to wire nothing you got to wire like this long and they were like yeah that would work but then the alternator um, as long as the big fat power wire which goes to your battery as long as your battery has power your alternator is on and that can cause uh, some if something's not right it can cause a draw on the car and drain the battery in a perfect world that wouldn't happen um, but you're basically just alternators always on uh, just like that 12 volt wire is always on coming off the battery unless on a race car we have a kill switch that's on the back of the car so the kill switch is off then the whole entire car stand um, so you could do that if you didn't want to put the alternator on a switch 12 volt but i was told that it's probably best to have it on a switch 12 volt all right so this is where we need to disclose that i am if you're not familiar with the channel and you're new here that i am new to holly and i'm learning as i go um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I've done all this and that's about it. I can't explain a lot of stuff because I've had other people help me and I've basically copied what they did successfully. So I can't really dive in depth and tell you why stuff works or what it does. But 
following these steps will get it where yours works too. And then hopefully you can learn and modify. So let's jump into the laptop. All right, so once you got your Holly open and I'm not, you can see there's no cords on that side of this side. I'm not actually tied into the car. I'm just gonna show you my tune. Um, you're gonna go up here on mine. Mine's the newest version out. We uploaded that or updated this at the track recently. So as of 7.7.23, this is the newest version. I think the version 300, I think it is um uh, v6 that you can do in the holly so you're going to go to your inputs and your outputs all right um you're going to go to your outputs all right and then you're going to have all your outputs now your outputs are already going to have some stuff on here such as your pws all that so these are pw negatives this is what we're looking for um is a pw uh negative that one i built this was already in here okay so for your ones that are already in there, depending on how your car is wired, um, depending it depends on what slot you can use. So I'm gonna just show you mine. Uh, like I said, this is kind of gonna be universal, but basically how mine's wired, this is Chris's notes. Uh, we have not cleaned this up. This is all rough draft, but these are the only outputs that he has labeled for me at this moment. Um, who, what, when, and why, I can't answer. But these are what's already done so this is what i went off of but you're gonna have to use one of your outputs in whatever uh, fashion that is so i chose to use number 10 which is a white and yellow wire for me like i said every situation is gonna be different and the only reason why i chose to use that is if we turn on our light right here and come into here it's because the white and yellow wire was right next to an orange and white that he's already using i think this is the air shifter so he's already using that so I just went to keep it clean right beside it. That's the only reason why I used uh, that one. So you're gonna find your output. Uh, that output for me is number 10. And then over here on his printout, uh, these are gonna be your plugs. So this is gonna be your J2A and your J2B. So we're gonna come down here and on our output 10 right here, this is gonna be the one you're using, which is B11. Uh, output 10 is B11. So we come in here, uh, once I picked what I was gonna use, and this was not a PWM. I'm pretty sure this was, it, This said, like this right here, it said 12 volt positive. I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly. Uh, on any of these, so let's just do an example of this one right here before it. Uh, if we come right here and click enable, now we can make modifications to output number nine, because we're right here on nine. Then you can drop it down and we switched it to a PWM negative, okay? So we're not gonna mess with that, but I'm just showing you, you can switch it to whatever you want. Um, now, one thing I did not understand was, uh, actually, let's put this back <laughs> like it was. I have no clue why. I'm funny about doing this. I don't wanna change all this crap up. All right, so, um, one thing I wasn't sure of that I asked my buddy, or I said, negative and positive, you know, I'm thinking of a battery. Have so, a battery, and you obviously can't put a negative wire on the positive terminal because that's not how the battery is made. That's not how it works. Uh, you can't knead a ground and go put it on a positive terminal inside the car. Uh, that's not how it works. So when I made a phone call to a friend, I was like, so how or can can i just this is a positive 12 in the system can i just willy-nilly just switch this thing to a pwm negative um like how how does we going from a 12 volt positive to a pwm negative basically that's where the line's drawn i don't understand how in the system that works um but somehow it does you can just switch in this situation what you need and you can make it a pwm and then inside the holly the holly does the work for you I'm guessing. so when we come back we have made us a, a pwm if you recall just a second ago i showed you over here my output 10 is b11 so then what you're going to do is if you change this actually let's just go ahead to number nine and then we'll put it back okay so we're going to change this to a pwm okay and then it's not defined so it doesn't know this is one thing i missed originally when it wasn't working is you have to define where it's at and we're going to go ahead and label this we're going to label this test just for this video okay 
Uh, let's see here. We'll hit, uh, we're going to go then to, um, let's see here, the pin map. So we'll click up top to your pin map, and then we're going to go to view outputs. Um, now you can see right here, our test is up here. So we're going to grab that, and then we will drop that onto output 9. Okay, right there, boom. And you can see now it says test on there, okay? Um, so now when you go back and we'll click done, okay? And we go to number nine right here under test. Now we have it labeled on what pin it is. So you're assigning up here on pin map, you're assigning what it is. And these are your only ones that you can drop. This is output or inputs. So outputs, like I have another one right here that's not assigned um, to nothing. I don't even know what that's for. Uh, I didn't do it. So your unassigned outputs will be right here, and then you can drop them down to where they to where they need to go. Uh, that's the basics. That's all I know. So um, let's go ahead. I need to get rid of that. Actually, we just won't save this tune when we exit out. Okay, so now you have it labeled so we're going to jump down here back to now number 10. it's labeled as alternator trigger uh, it's set up as your pwn you've got it done on your pin out you've got that assigned where it needs to go which for me is b11 remember this b5 up here was just a test to show you all how to do it so this is where i'm at now you know b11 everything is set up right here okay now we're going to come over here to configure and now we're going to actually configure everything so I'm going to show you what mine is set up every single chart. That way you can just copy and then you can uh, you can mess with it on your own. So my switched input triggers are set to zero. Uh, my sensor input triggers down here is on number one. And then it says this output will activate when the RPM is above 400. So when the RPM on the motor is above 400, which is any freaking time it's running, uh, this will switch over now it's confusing to me why this says input we're using output um i can't answer that again but i copied it off of somebody else and it works um i do not have that box checked or nothing like that so we're going to go to linked outputs we'll click that chart next for my linked outputs is zero so there's no nothing on that and on the timer there's nothing set on the timer okay so all of that stuff is just make sure yours is all blank and there's nothing on it the PWM setup, here's where everything was actually set up. So the RPM chart over here, it starts at 500 and then it was went up to 8,500. Now I can't sit here and teach you exactly how to build this chart because I don't even know. Uh, I know that when I originally built this, I manually input every single thing when I'm pretty sure that you can select them and uh, click an item to auto populate them. Um, but I'm still learning. So the TPMS, which is the media throttle position sensor, when it, this is going to be 0% when the throttle is not pushed, and this is when it would be the throttle is pushed 100% all the way to the floor. Um, so we've filled in in here from 6,300-ish, 6,500-ish is probably about where you would be, depending on how yours maps out. Um, 50, we've put in the number 50. I'm not going to say that's 50%. Again, I, I am very, very new to this. So this whole block right here is 50% up to 73% throttle. So when the throttle gets to 80%, when your throttle's down to 80%, this all goes zero. So from my understanding, from copying this gentleman's chart, um, shout out to everyone that's helped me with this, is that he said to play it safe, he cuts his alternator off past 80% throttle because obviously it is spending up right here. The more you're in the throttle, the more RPMs you're spinning up, and then the alternator is trying to charge at a higher RPM. So flat out, just to play it safe, past 80% throttle, he has it where the alternator cuts off and it does not do its efficient charging. Now it will still charge, mine has been charging this whole entire time without this, but it charges at 13.6 all the time versus this right here currently has it up to 14.1, 14.2. Uh, I think we can get a little higher, but I have not figured out how to get that up yet. Probably is not needed. Uh, but 13.6 will damage a battery from what I said long term because it's not charging it at its full potential. Uh, you need to be in the 14s from what I'm told. Um, so we have mine set up basically if you copy this chart where past 65-ish 100 RPMs, the alternator cuts off. 
Uh, past 80% throttle, the alternator cuts off. It's feeding it all zero in here, nothing. That way, when we're over revving the alternator, it's not also trying to charge the battery. Uh, whether that makes sense or not, I'm not sure. This is just what I copied. Uh, the other gentleman that I copied, he had his whole entire uh, chart pretty much at 50, like everything 50. So even his wide open throttle and um, high RPM, everything was set to charge. So uh, again, I can't really point you in a direction on that, uh, but that's how mine is set up. So up here, uh, you're gonna make sure your type is on fixed, frequency is on 100. You know, the other gentleman that was helping me, had, he had his on 125. Um, I'm not sure what frequency changes. Um, but like I said, I'm completely new to this. Just trying to show you what mine is set up. But uh, the guy that I've copied to get everything working, his is at 100. Your table units is gonna be in duty cycle percentage and your X axis is gonna be TPS which is down here. This is gonna be your X axis across the bottom. Then your Y axis is gonna be RPMs, which is gonna be right here. So that is gonna be your PWM setup. Uh, that's pretty much it um, of how all of that is used and set up. Hopefully this will get you going uh, because when I tried to do this, there was no YouTube videos. That was very clear and dumbed down and basic um, and basically sometimes I want to learn how to do things just like everybody else but there's also sometimes where you just want to cheat on the test so you just want to take somebody else's notes somebody else's paperwork you just want to copy what they did and you just want to get your butt down the road and that's what I was looking for when I did this is I just wanted this to work so that I can make some other changes with the battery on the car and um, I could get the show on the road. So hopefully this will get the show on the road. If you have any tips, pointers, uh, explanations, anything, go ahead and drop them in the comments. I respond to every comment that I see. Some of them I YouTube blocks and I don't see them, but I respond to pretty much everything. And also that way, if you are currently watching this video and you're trying to figure yours out, go hit the comments. I have some very, very, very smart people on my channel that comment and take time to help others also and the comment section could be full of even more information by the time you find this video. So make sure you read through the comments also because somebody might have either corrected me or added a bit of information uh, to this video. So hopefully you smash that like button if this helps you out and uh, hopefully this will get you up and running. So I'll catch y'all in the next video. Thanks y'all.